Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the December 14th Select Board meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order, and uh, we will take public comment at this time relating to the Select Board meeting. Seeing no public comment, I would actually like to invite the School Committee and the Finance Committee to join our meeting for our uh, Tri Board meeting where we will learn the five-year financial forecast and the capital improvement plan for fiscal years 24 to 28. So go ahead, open the meeting. Okay, um, I would like to open the school committee meeting on December 14th, uh, 2022 at 7.02. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, I think you need to say who's present since not everyone is in person. Okay, um, we have Ms. Picard virtual, Mr. McDevitt? Yeah. Mr. Hicks? Here. Mr. B Ms. Here. Hansky, sorry. <laughs> and I am here as well. Ms. Thank you. All right. And um, seeing as the finance committee has a quorum, I will call our meeting to order at 702. Um, we're good. Great. Uh, I ask for you to stand with me for the is the presentation of the town manager's five-year financial forecast. Okay, and I'm going to need a lot of patience because we're having some technical difficulties and I'm going to try to at least get into the Google Meet so we can see there. Hold on one moment, please. And I apologize and appreciate everybody's patience. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do um, is we are going to share over to the Google Meet so that we can all see on that screen. Um, you do have a copy of the presentation in front of you right now. We're going to do the financial forecast first. Um, okay. yelling at me, I apologize. Hold on a minute. All right, we're, we're gonna, we're moving forward anyway, so here we go. <laughs> so tonight we're doing the five-year financial forecast um, for fiscal years 2024 through 2028. As you may know, this is required by our town charter. We always like to start this by doing a review of the financial condition of the town, and I'm still trying to get this over to the Google Meet so everyone can see it, but it doesn't appear to want to let me run into a slideshow. Right. I can see it from the Google Meet from where I'm sitting, Melissa. You can see, but I can't do the slideshow for some reason. So, I see. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, it's all good. So um, just about the financial condition of the town, we continue to maintain our, maintain our AAA bond rating, which as you know is very important because we will be bonding quite a few projects within the next 15 to 17 years. Um, this rating reflects our strong economy, our strong financial management, and our strong budgetary performance. Again, we have received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for 2022, and we've received the Government Finance Officers Association Distinguished Budget Award for 2022. So a little bit about our reserves. In the Town Stabilization Fund, we have $5.6 million. In our Capital Stabilization Account, we have $4.5 million. And if you remember correctly, we made a larger than usual transfer into that account last year, which will be used for the design of the Kittredge School. In our special <clears throat> education stabilization account, we have $772,190. We have not used that account um, and since I've been here, um, and we don't plan to. We're trying to fund any special education deficits from within the budget using our Finance Committee Reserve. 
Our free cash was certified at the end of the fiscal year at $12.9 million, and our OPUB trust currently has $5.4 million. So just a little bit about why we do a financial forecast and why we do these projections. And it's really a very useful management tool internally, but it also helps us make policy decisions um, as we move forward. And also can serve as a, a warning system. So if we know that we're going to have a future gap between revenues and expenditures, or for instance, we know that something is either going to be coming on or falling off of our budget, it allows us to plan for that. It certainly does not insulate us from potential surprises or emergencies, but it does allow us to consider and try to account for them. Well, look at that. Thank you, Brian. Okay. So the forecast is really, um, I don't want to call it a guess, but it's an estimate. We look at our past expenditures and revenues. We rely on the expertise of our staff, including the people in the building department, our town assessor, um, and we talk about what we're expecting over the next couple of years. It's really most effective when it's short, so three to five years. We really don't try to ever go out more than five. Um, it's pretty highly unusual that we did that with Facilities Master Plan too, um, but we, in that we were able to work with things we actually knew were happening. Um, and this, like I said, is more of guesses and estimates. It's definitely not anything that's going to be detailed. Um, it's just a summary. It's very conservative. And bond rating agencies look on it very favorably. So they like to see that we are doing this and that we're doing it annually. So the town has four major categories of revenues. We have our real estate and personal property taxes, our intergovernmental aid, our local receipts, and then miscellaneous revenue. Um, what we do is project the revenue. We identify all the different funds available for the budget. We do that annually right as we begin our budget process. We look through prior years. We look for trends, anomalies, things that maybe weren't typical. Um, we saw that a lot with our local receipts the last couple of years with COVID. So this is up 1% from last year, and this is our real estate and property taxes. It accounts for the largest portion of our revenues at 78%. The tax levy, for those of you that don't know at home, is the amount a community raises through its property tax. The levy can be any amount up to the levy limit. So you can raise 2.5% annually as per the limitations of a Massachusetts general law. And then you can raise more through three separate mechanisms, which would be either a debt or capital exclusion, which is a temporary increase to the tax levy to pay either for an individual item or for debt an override, which is a permanent increase to the tax levy, and then we also can raise for new growth. And new growth is just taxes that come from any new construction that we have during that fiscal year. Um, and so, you know, an example of that can be, and what you typically see, is one to three single-family houses coming on in a small, part of, a small amount of commercial. So this year, fiscal year 24, we are anticipating about $1.3 million in new growth, so a little more than what we typically think we're going to see, which is around 800000 Some of the things that we know are coming on is the Avalon Project, the second part of Signature Commons, Minko, a storage facility that's going up, and the first part of the Amazon personal property. Now, this is less than we thought originally had projected, which is why it's estimates, um, last year for new growth for this year. And that's because of supplier delays for Amazon. So we were hopeful that all of Amazon's personal property would be accounted for in this fiscal year. It won't be. So we'll be seeing more new growth in fiscal year 25 because of the Amazon personal property. Um, but originally thought we had seen all of that in fiscal year 23 and 24. Again, this is, I think, more of an estimate than we typically would say it is um, because we won't have good information on what Amazon's personal property numbers are until January. So at this point, we're still kind of, um, we're still kind of just estimating and trying to put the budget together based on what we know instead of what we think. Uh, we also need to see if Amazon gets their occupancy permits by June 30th so we can see if the TIF goes into effect. And so that would affect um, how much we raise in the next fiscal year as well. For the second revenue source, it's intergovernmental. So this comprises about 11% of what we receive, and this is pretty much what we get from the state. So it's Chapter 70, which is, is aid for schools, it's veterans reimbursement, which right now the state reimburses about 75% of what the veterans office um, spends. It's state-owned land. Um, and this is something that we very much have to estimate because the state's budget is not done until way after our budget is done. So we typically rely on the year before so we can make sure we don't end up with any type of deficit. Um, last year, for fiscal year 23, the year we're currently in, 
Um, we have $10.7 million in Chapter 70, $3 million in just general um, municipal aid, and then we actually pay $670,000 back to the state. So we get a bill, um, basically. They give us money and then they take it. Um, so six seventy dollars goes back to them. The third type of revenue is local receipts, and that's 9% of all of our revenues that we receive annually. This has started to level off a little bit more. We're accounting for our regular 3% annual increases again. If you remember correctly, at one point, this was actually down by 4%, mostly due to COVID. Um, people just weren't, we were not seeing the typical fees and fines that we had typically seen. Um, this can also really um, have strange anomalies that we need to watch. For instance, lodge building permits that we don't typically, we wouldn't typically have. We can't rely on those year to year. And so we're very careful to look back at our historical spending on these items. So the type of thing we typically see here, motor vehicle, meals and lodging taxes, any pilots we have, penalties, investment income, host community fees. And like I said, we're very conservative and we budget for this. And then the fourth and final is operating transfers. So that's basically money that we're taking from other parts of our budget um, to pay <laughs> for things within the regular general operating budget. And that's only about 1.5%. And that's really almost 100% now from the enterprise funds indirect costs. And so our enterprise funds, if you remember correctly, are just water and sewer at this point. So this is a chart showing um, how we bring our revenue in. And as you can see, about 78% of this is through the tax levy and through taxes. Of that 78%, 75% of that is residential. So a majority of our taxes really do come from our residential taxpayers. This next chart is showing our revenue projections. Um, so you can see the fiscal year 23 is our adopted what we adopted at town meeting, what the vote was, and then fiscal year 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 are what we estimate our revenues will look like um, looking out. So again, we'll have $1.3 million in new growth for 24. Right now we're estimating $1.8 million in new growth for 25, but then we're going back down to normal new growth estimates of $700,000. So the next thing that we do when we're forecasting is we think about what our potential expenses are going to look like. So what are we spending money on? And so we know it's, it's all the things that we typically would see in the budget, education, our general government, public safety, et cetera, our capital that we do within our budget, the debt that we know about. And we think about what those fixed costs are. So what do we know we're gonna have increasing? We know we have certain contracts for services like IT software, we have um, collective bargaining agreements that we have already settled so we can account for what those costs are. We know insurance typically increases by a certain percentage each year. Uh, we look and see, has there been any demographic changes? Is there any new state bylaws, that, new state laws that we need to account for? Are there any bylaws that are gonna cause an increase in our costs? And then we account for all of that as well. So this is our expenditure forecast um, moving forward. In, like I said, it really does try to take it in fact as much as we can. Um, you know, we are looking at about a 7% increase for benefits, um, which right now we don't know if that's high or low because the GIC has not voted yet on what the final benefit costs will be, um, but will soon. This is our estimated retirement for the next five years and what that payment looks like. What's very interesting about this is that in fiscal year 36, this goes away. Um, so if you remember correctly, people were not fully funding their retirement appropriation. And so the state mandated all municipalities to start paying what they owed um, because if everyone retired at once, we'd be in big trouble. So we all started paying um, on a schedule. A lot of communities really extended that schedule out to, to 42 or 45. We did not do that. So our payments end in 36. So one of the things that we talk about internally is, you know, obviously we'll have a significant amount of money become available in 36, and how do we plan for that? And one of the things that we talk about is do we start just transferring that over to OPEB? Is that something that the state is going to end up starting to require? Um, which wouldn't be a surprise, I think, for anybody in the financial side. This breaks down basically what we spend our money on, or what we're forecast to spend our money on. I know it says the schools are 50%. Uh, it's more like 69% when you take into account the benefits and the shared services. Um, obviously the biggest part of our budget. Um, and then after that, it, it goes down to public safety. 
This is the five-year forecast moving forward. Um, it shows you basically the revenue and the expenses on both ends. Um, one of the things, so one, don't get nervous <laughs> because we do show a deficit in 25, 26, 27, and 28. Um, that's only because we're forecasting so conservatively. Those things will even out as we start to move forward. If you look back 15 years on expenditure on these forecasts, you would see the same thing, but we've never had those deficits. One of the things that I um, want you to recognize, I think, um, is that in fiscal year 24, there's a large surplus. So that's the $1.9 million surplus. Um, that is a meaningful surplus. We are doing that on purpose. So if you remember correctly, last year, the Amazon 75% of Amazon came onto our books. Um, and we knew then that we wanted to raise those funds and use them for a one-time expenditure, but we didn't want to keep them on because when the TIF goes into effect, 80% of their payment will get flipped on to the rest of the taxpayers, which could cause as much as a $1,000, $1,200 swing on our average single-family home. None of us want to see that. So we've been really trying to make sure that that bucket of money is, is held so that we could start bringing it on slowly so that it's not this huge effect at once. Remember that the TIF, every two years, starts to, we start to get more tax money from Amazon. So it starts out as a $900,000 payment when their TIF goes into effect, and then it becomes higher. However, if you also probably remember from my conversations about our TIF, is that their personal property is likely to decrease. So as the TIF increases and the personal property depreciates, they should kind of meet in the middle and level off so that we won't see any loss based on the TIF. And it was done that way purposefully. Um, so. I just want to explain why that, why we're seeing that surplus next year. That is a purposeful surplus um, because we're trying not to see that large swing due to the Amazon TIF going into effect. We do have a small capacity this year. So you're seeing there was a surplus in fiscal year 23 based on the adopted budget of 226. Um, as you know, we had $6 million in new growth this year. I think we did a pretty good job estimating, um, nerve-wracking job estimating, the assessor will tell you. Um, so there was about $226,000 surplus this year. And that's the entire financial forecast. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, the finance director is here with us as well, and I know she'd be happy to answer questions too. Yes. There's a lot of positive in there. There is. It's true. Yeah, we, um, we're in very good financial standing, so. I guess I'm going to have to talk really loud. <laughs> okay. No, I'm all set. I was looking for. I'm good. No, I just want to thank you. I know a lot of work has gone into this, and all the department heads that are here tonight as well. I know um, there's a lot of work that you guys put in to, to get to this point, and there's a lot of collaboration that goes on as well as I was going through the CIP. I see where, you know, in some ways we're spending more on fire in some years and police on, in other years, so I know there's collaboration that goes on there, and I want to thank you all for, for being that way and being able to, you know, bring this forward and, and make it something that we can all be proud of. So thank you. I echo that. <laughs> So thank you all for your diligent hard work that has put us in this in this good position. So um, we can move on to item B. Okay. Sure. Uh, so within here, um, is there anywhere where we would specifically expect to see um, funding for facilities master plan two? Kind of carved out, or do you car do you literally just kind of roll that into existing numbers? Nope. So most of the facilities match plan two until fiscal year twenty eight is rolled into existing numbers. We don't start having to really pull from anywhere else until after that. Um, so what you're seeing here includes everything for fiscal year for everything for facilities master plan two through fiscal year twenty eight. Okay. So just to further clarify, I mean one of the things that we've talked about with, for example, the middle school project um, would be the additional, you know, staff or resources that would be there. So can I assume that that number is included, um, I'm not sure what page it is, but um, the expenditure forecast um, under the schools? For fiscal year 25, the new positions at the middle school are included. And so if you remember correctly, it was about... Okay. $1,090,000, I believe, 
um, to fund those positions. Lynn's nodding along with me, so I'm assuming I'm right on that number. That's um, okay. And they are included in the fiscal year 25 forecast. So basically what we've done is we've taken everything we know about facilities master plan two through fiscal year 28, and we've inserted it in here. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay, let's move on to item B, which Okay, so this is the easy one. So we're going to run through the capital improvement plan for fiscal year 24. As you know, we do um, create a capital improvement plan every year. It's anything that costs over $25,000 and has a lifespan of at least five years. What we basically do is we provide a planning schedule. We figure out how we think we're going to pay for it. We do try to fund everything that's less than $50,000 from within the operating budget. And then basically what you get today is the plan and then a capital budget, which is presented to town meeting for approval. So just to over, an overview of how we do this, basically we ask department heads and the schools to submit and prioritize their requests. Uh, we evaluate the requests and then we actually have a group meeting to discuss them, um, go over any concerns and talk about what we're planning on having for funding mechanisms. I find this works well because it does encourage a lot of dialogue between the departments and a lot of the time you may not know something you're doing in your division is something someone else is doing. Um, and so we can see cost savings by doing that. So the five-year plan has 45 projects in a five-year period totaling over $145 million. That does include um, facilities master plan two as well. The total for fiscal year 23 is $28.9 million with 25 projects, much higher than we typically see. I think the last three our last three capital plans have hovered around $6 million. The reason you're seeing that is because the middle school is included for next year. So this is a list, basically, of all of the different projects. So we have the Facilities Master Plan 2 implementation, like I just talked about. Um, that's the $21 million cost of the middle school. What you're not seeing here, because it's, kind of being, it's going to be a transfer, is the design for Kittredge. We have the Fields Master Plan implementation, playground improvements, and these are all in your book. Um, we have a tree inventory and management plan. So as you know, we are getting um, $750,000 from Amazon through the community develop the development agreement for trees, um, which is a lot of money. So we want to make sure we know how to, to spend that in the best possible way. We have replacement of our assessing software. Um, we have replacement of all of our tasers. We have a fire prevention car. We have some signal communications for the fire department. We have our typical roadway improvements, and so you see that's $1.2 million. About 800, 850,000 of that actually comes from the state. It needs to be used on regional roadways, and then the rest of the funding is, is from um, the town. We have two front end loader replacements. We have work on culverts, something that we've been trying to do over the last three years is assess all of our culverts. So um, often DPW will have divers come in, um, go down, and make sure that they're, there's not crack, they're not um, fill, filled. And so that's something that we're continuing to work on. We have the continuation of our sidewalk, sidewalk improvements. We have sewer improvements at the police department. We have a new fueling station at Public Works. We have our typical IT items, which is just um, IT municipal computer workstation replacements, but we're also going to be up to upgrading our capital improvement plan website, which I'm excited about because we'll be able to have more project oriented. Um, facilities has a buildings replacement and repair, so anything that goes wrong during the year, um, we go to that. We also have roof replacements for various buildings. We have HVAC equipment that we're replacing. We are going to be doing our ADA facilities upgrade. So if you remember correctly, um, we just finished our ADA evaluation. And if you guys don't know, um, our assistant town manager, Andrew Shapiro, was just awarded an um, award from the group that did that um, for his work on it. So it's pretty amazing. Um, but we are going to be doing those upgrades, um, or signing those upgrades in this fiscal year. Um, we have school drainage. We have updates to the high school auditorium. We have a design for the ABECC gyms. What we're trying to do there is move that slightly out of spot, use some Amazon free cash funding that we didn't know we were going to have because their permit fee was higher than we thought, and we're looking at trying to do a prefab gym to give them a little bit more space there that they desperately need. We have IT for the schools, and then we have district-wide exterior maintenance and renovations and district-wide paving. And so those are all items that the schools use for their capital improvements during the year. 
Um, and so, you know, a lot of routine stuff, things you're going to see every single year, um, and then new things, right? So that implementation of the ADA plan, the implementation of the fields master plan that we're just about done with are kind of some of the exciting new things that we're, we're bringing forward. Absolutely. So um, are any of these projects, I, I seem to remember, um, I think it was Andrew, when Andrew came before our board last month or the month before, he talked about some uses of the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And some some of these, and I, and I could be misremembering, but some of these were on that list, am I? Am I? So you might be thinking about, we did some security funding. Yeah. Um, and that was security items that for the schools. What we've really tried to discourage um, from opera funding is asking, is any routine capital items? Yep. We've tried to move away from that just because we do have a, an adequate funding source for those. Um, so other than that. So there are, there's no repeat from, from that? There should way. not be okay. any repeat. Okay. Good. I, I think some of the labeling was. Yeah, it could be close. Pretty close. That's what, yeah. Thank you. We've certainly had applications for some of these right. <laughs> that have been and, denied. And <laughs> and they're laughing. Yes. Um, <laughs> but we've been sending back all of the routine capital stuff and asking people to do it that way so that we can use Perfect. the money impactfully. Thank you. Um, and so one of the big things in this year's capital plan is obviously the continuation of facilities master plan two. And I'm going to briefly present on that because I don't want anyone to forget about it. <laughs> um, so every year you're going to hear me say this again. But um, so again, these are the buildings that are in facilities master plan two. I'm sure we all know them. Um, this is a lovely picture of us when we did our um, groundbreaking for the senior center, um, which will be done this winter. Um, and maybe our next me tribal meeting will be there. That would be nice. Um, so again, these are the order of projects. You can see the red for the middle school is actually what we funded in fiscal year 23. The orange is what we plan on, fu on funding in fiscal year 24. The reason I have the design of the Kittredge um, done that way is because um, we transferred the money in fiscal year 23, but we're not really appropriating it until fiscal year 24. But we saved it because we had it. So. Um, again, the projected cost today, if we were like, let's, vote, let's break down on all of these, is $139 million. The total cost of the projects using the recommended order, which is 15 years, and accounts for inflation is $167 million. It's all in, so anything you can imagine that would be needed from these buildings, and we just talked about the staff of the middle school, is all accounted for in the plan. Um, we account for 3% operating inflation a year and 5% construction cost inflation per year of the plan. Just a positive change from years past. Yeah, we so really tried to, no, we're happy to, we're ha we, you know, no one ever wants to come back to town meeting to ask for more <laughs> money to finish something. So we try to go in with a realistic budget, yeah. um, which is great. Um, again, I know this is school, committee, school committee's favorite slide, Mr. McDevitt, we went over this last year, but um, we're power funding of fiscal year 24, no new cost to taxpayers. <laughs> um, so fiscal year 24, again, that debt is all money we've been saving. So you remember the last couple of years, we had debt that fell off and we held on to it and we didn't let it get kind of gobbled up for anything else. So we're using that debt um, at the end of 24 to really take on this middle school construction. Again, for the kitchen's design, we saved money and that was what we used a lot of the Amazon one-time revenue for. We transferred that into capital stabilization so we wouldn't have to bond the kitchen's design. Um, and in future years, we're using a combination of debt capacity, free cash, and that capital stabilization account. Again, <laughs> the average single family tax bill for fiscal year 24 due to facilities master plan 2 is $0. It's amazing. It is. Um, for fiscal year 24, our funding plan for the capital generally is to use $6 million, $6.4 million in free cash. And then Chapter 90, that's the money that comes from the state. Um, to pay for our rubies is $820,000. If you remember from the beginning of the meeting, I told you that 12, free cash is $12.9 million, so we still would be carrying over about $6 million in free cash. We have been carrying over about $6 million in free cash the last three years. Um, we've pretty much been spending down half of it, um, and then, as you all know, on June 30th, your free cash goes completely away, and they recertify it. So we pretty much have just been carrying a balance and using it a little bit like a savings account. This just explains our debt over the years. Um, as you can see, as you get into 26, 27, and 28, a lot of our non-excluded debt starts to fall off, which is great. Um, you know, that's kind of what we, what we want to see. We don't really want to get to that point. Um, the yellow line, if you can see it on the chart, um, is the 4.5% net revenue that we um, had kind of as our plan moving forward. Um, and we're staying pretty much at that or below that. Um, in the next couple of years. 
And then we have two other small CIPs that we bring forward each year that are paid for through our retained earnings. So the sewer capital improvement plan, and if, remember the retained earnings are basically um, the free cash of the enterprise funds. So if you think about them, they're, they're basically the same thing. They, again, are also um, completely gone on June 30th and then recertified again. These are pretty small projects, but they're going to do some improvements to the, the sewer pump stations. Um, these are outside of the large sewer project that is being done by opera funds. So there is a very large $3.5 million sewer pump station project, um, something that we really could never have afforded to do using um, the REITs. So we are doing that with opera. Uh, we have a sewer collection system improvements, and then we have a new sewer utility truck that we're purchasing. And then in water, we actually only have two projects this year, which is an improvement to our water booster stations, and then some well-deserved and needed um, renovations in our lab. So a um, total of 425000 from that. And that's it. So all, a lot of our department heads are here. If people have questions about the individual items, um, you know, they're always happy to come back to any other meeting, too. I know you just got your books. Um, but if you have any questions, we're happy to try to answer them. Yeah. First of all, Department Heads, thank you for all the hard work that you guys put into uh, this budget. Very comprehensive. Just to be a bit granular, how intentional is the town around preventative maintenance? Very intentional. Okay. It, now, would that represent in a, uh, a line item here, or, or how does that reflect in our budget, if it does? So some of it is in the regular operating budget because it's really much less than what we would typically account for. Um, we have separate contracts for pretty much everything, HVAC, elevator, um, and we carry all of those contracts. Um, we do have, as you can see, $450,000 for building replacement and repairs, and that's for like little things, and then again, another 923000 for roof replacement and 400000 for HVAC. Additionally, in the shared service budget, so basically there's, a, there's one other budget, and what we do here in town is we have one facilities department that's shared between the schools in town, and he has his own separate budget that has additional funds that we use for routine maintenance as well. Um, everything's on a very clear schedule. Um, the heat, Steve does a great job. Where is he? Steve does a wonderful job, and we're very lucky to have him. Um, Steve, thank you. Yeah. And you can see the same thing with the schools. I don't know if the schools always had these accounts. I believe they're fairly new over the last three years. Um, but we've really tried to invest in the buildings that we have. And since we're doing so much work, we want to make sure we continue to do that. So one of the things that you'll even see in this budget, even in our last budget, fiscal year 23, even though the senior center is not coming on until March, our um, DPW director and our um, facilities director were smart enough to start actually putting that into that budget at the end of the year so that we could start making sure we're doing maintenance right away on those buildings. Yeah, so this can be a hard sell, but mm -hmm. obviously, if done properly, we can start to see the value of preventative maintenance in a very intentional way. Same thing with our vehicles. So, you know, we have a whole rolling stock plan as well. Um, last year, effective this year, we actually created a revolving account at town meeting where we sell our vehicles rather than turn them in, and we've seen sometimes three or four times what we would have gotten, mm -hmm. and that money all goes into a revolving account and then is used towards the new vehicles, and so we're actually able to do a lot more than we could before. Thank you. I have a few questions. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm just curious where the number for the um, fields uh, implementation came from. Is, do we think that that's enough? Is that the feedback we're getting from the consultant? Or? So we have a preliminary report. Okay. This would basically do design for the first project that we think will be the priority. Um, we haven't gotten the final report yet. However, we asked to see a few of them so that we could at least kind of put something in because we, we knew not everyone's on the same schedule as us here at municipality. It's amazing. <laughs> um, and so what this is is design of the first field. Okay. Okay. So, but not construction. Right. But not construction. construction. So basically what we like to do is we like to do all our designs first because you just don't know until you really get in the, the meat of it what that construction cost is going to look like. Um, but yes, this is just design. Okay. And then part to kind of piggyback off of that, the, the schools have the baseball fields as part of their exterior maintenance, mm -hmm. but I know that it's also being picked up by that report. It is. So is that going to be sort of a combination of both? So my, basically, the initial report that we've looked at has those fields probably as project 
two, I would say, two or three. Okay. Um, so it won't be immediate, which means that it will be a few years out still. Um, so the money they're put in, they'll put into it now will be helpful as we kind of move forward move on. Forward. on okay. Yeah. A lot of the, the interesting part about um, the plan, the field's master plan, is that um, the town has done a remarkably good job with very limited resources and through the, I think, good graces of our, our boosters and our yeah, other yes. groups, right? Um, so the, the actual fields aren't in terrible condition. <laughs> um, but there certainly is work that needs to be done on all of them, and we need to figure out a way to get our fields the rest they need, which sounds really silly, but if you're a fields person, you know that you're working these fields all the time, the condition becomes bad. And so, you know, the what the study did was it looked at utilization, it met with all of our stakeholders, and then it came up with a plan for the fields, much like Facilities Master Plan 2. Um, and then we kind of, right now we're working on, on the prioritizing of it, but this will kick it off. Much like the playgrounds, like playground. yeah. Um, and then, we have obviously the town IT costs and then the school IT costs. Mm -hmm. Are there overlap in? There is. So services? again, that's the shared service as well. Yeah. Um, and so we have that with our shared services budget. There's one. There's two directors though. We have uh, Mike Grant and then we have John Highland. Um, our needs are often very different, um, particularly because of the number of users that the schools have. Um, so we do keep those budgets a little bit separated, except when it comes to like software and stuff like that, then they're there together. And then looking at the gym costs, I'm just, it's light, like $300,000 doesn't get you out of the ground. So I'm just curious. Oh, so this is just design. Yeah, this is just design. This is just design. Just design. Yes. Okay. And the thought is that we're just exploring right now um, prefab, like at the Kittredge, in order to get um, them some much needed space. Um, and the thought process behind this was we, for the electrical permit for Amazon, um, was an amount of money we did not know we were going to be getting. It was kind of like a pleasant surprise. Um, and so the thought is that we would use those funds to try to infl to put this project together. Um, this is just step one in that. This is step one. Okay. Step one. That is but, very clear. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I kind of have a follow-up on that. So sure. facilities master plan two still has ABECC at the end of it. What other improvements are expected to ABECC in 35 when we get to, like, What's the end game? Jim, do you want to speak to that? Because if we do the gym now, it's still a really new building. So mm -hmm. right. do the gym sooner than anticipated. So the total project included some support space um, within that building. Uh, but we can manage without that until the time that it's in the schedule. Uh, the gym is something that, because the opportunity presented itself, we pull that out and are just doing that. Can I ask a quick question? I think that would accelerate the gym at the ABECC by something like 13 years. Just the gym portion of it, yes. Just the gym. And, and that's only if we can figure out the prefab. Jim has been very creative um, in ideas for the ABECC, um, so we're hopeful that we'll be able to, to make something work. Okay. Thank you. But, sorry, the, so the, the design is in fiscal 24, but then there's no other forecasted budget so the implementation wouldn't happen till after this chart <laughs> so implementation could not happen till after this chart or we would add it in so things move um, or sometimes we don't put anything in at all because we just don't know what it's going to cost and I have found that once you put a number out everyone holds on to that number for the rest of your life so like you said in 1996 um, so um, but we have we have it on our kind of mental forecast at this point next year it really gives us the potential uh, and the opportunity. So the opportunity presents itself to create that space earlier uh, for the gym, but then creating the support space is necessary too in the long term. I'm also really happy to see uh, the influx, or it seems like a bunch of projects for DPW. I feel like we've kind of neglected them for a little bit. So, um, but I'm curious. Um, there's never enough money for road work. So will we always be looking for other avenues <laughs> for sidewalks and roads along the way? This just, it's not a lot of money and there's a lot to be done and um, probably the number one thing we hear about. <laughs> so, uh, you know, will we continually be looking for other 
revenue streams for streets and sidewalks and so I anticipate that I, my plan would be to increase this budget moving forward um, but not this year because we're finishing contract the contracts for the Columbia gas work and we really have our hands full with that um, but I do think that we're gonna have to see a, a greater investment not only because um, we want to do more but because the materials are so expensive right now so in essence a stable budget means we're doing less right so you know once we finish Columbia gas the Columbia gas work um, it will be good to revisit what this looks like and we had discussed as a board that we wanted to reevaluate the, um, the order is does that include so they actually already have started that okay. evaluation um, this year so they have a contractor who's actually doing that work right now And is the high school track resurfacing accounted for anywhere in recent, soonish, or is that, I, it was mentioned um, in one of the applications, but there was no specific about when that might happen. So I'm assuming maybe not this year, but I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> so yeah, you'll be seeing that coming forward in the next couple of years. We've got the tennis courts and we've got the high school track. Mm -hmm. And we're it's in going to be a few all years. part of the um, the fields master plan. That so those year. needs will be identified, and we'll be bringing them forward as capital requests going forward. Okay. I think Thank we're going to see a lot of progress from the fields master plan. Okay. I'm very excited about it. That's exciting. Other questions? I have one question, and I ask Chief Gray. Sorry, every year, I don't see any new cruisers. <laughs> capital there. expenses. They're in the operating budget because they're less okay. than 50,000. So Chief, I believe there's three this year again? So three, yeah. We okay. do three every so year. Roll stock, roll yes. Stock okay. That's been a huge supply chain issue for us, yep. um, un unfortunately, and the, the Chief has done a great job of kind of coming up with alternatives, um, but we do three every year through the operating. Okay. I saw a lot of fire vehicles. <laughs> Don't worry, they, they keep count. They have a little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all. Italian back there. Well, that's a good question for Chief. Where may we get 105 foot ladder truck with 105, is that going to be, given the, the construction we have going on in town, is that going to be tall enough? The 105 foot ladder truck that you're purchasing in a couple of years, yes. is that going to be tall enough to get to everything we need to get to? Uh, well, 105 is about as tall as the ladder truck as you can get oh, until you start okay. getting to some extreme sizes and then it becomes an issue trying to get around road, roadways and such. So unfortunately, like the Amazon building that's going up right now, we can't reach the roof with the ladder truck right. as it is now. But it's an issue that faces every city. I mean, you go into Boston, all the high rises, you can't reach them as well. So um, fire prevention's uh, working pretty closely um, to try as we see new projects come online, try to make sure we have access so that we can get vehicles in as close as we can. And so, okay. all right, thank thanks. You. But the building's a sprinkler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. correct. That helps That's, somewhat. Yeah. That helps somewhat, correct, yes. Before we end this portion of the meeting, I do just want to reiterate our, our thanks for everybody's hard work getting us to this point. You all make it seem easy, so <laughs> let's hope that uh, things go as smoothly as it seems like they will. So we appreciate you um, and your, your diligence in getting us here. And can I just speak to, because it, it was brought up, it's a little bit different about the roads and the sidewalks. I have to tell you that the, uh, the uh, roads that are on um, like Beverly Street area, it, it looks fantastic. What a difference that that has made Thank for you. that neighborhood. We they, appreciate that. No, they really look fantastic. Yeah. It's just, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> just to restate it, um, I just want to com comment to DPW that the um, the sidewalks and the roads in the Beverly Street area, that whole area, are just, they just look fantastic. It's just so refreshed, that neighborhood. And um, parking's always going to be a little bit of a problem, but, you know, that one we're not going to fix. Um, it's just what it is. It's like in the historic areas near the mill. It just is what it is that it's, uh, they didn't have cars back then. Um, but congratulations, it really looks great, so... As we mentioned it, I thought I would mention that it just, every time I drive down there, it looks great. So.
there are no other comments, then you guys are free to close your meetings, I guess, and we will continue on. <laughs> okay, do, uh, do I have a motion from the Finance Committee? A second. I move that we adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Second, thanks. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Finance Committee is closed. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. And then we'll vote um, roll call because we have Ms. Picard um, virtual. Ms. Picard? I move that we close the school committee meeting for uh, December a, 14th at 646. We had a, a, a movement in a second. We just need to vote. I'm sorry. I did not hear that. Sorry. Um, yes. Yes. I am in favor of. <laughs> Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Mr. Hicks? Yes. Ms. Wietzke? Yes. And I will vote yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, uh, good to see yep. you. I know. Phew. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Are they keeping us alive? Mm -hmm. I'll check in on I'll have yeah. Yeah, I'll have someone check on him. How are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm new in town, so uh, I'm Ken Gray. Laura, hey, Laura, nice to meet you. Hi, Ken. Janice Phillips, hey, Janice, nice, to, nice meet to meet you. I have a couple of daughters who live here. And, uh, yes, kids, I know, yeah. I know them. <laughs> yeah, kids, all, yeah, all yes, 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 yes. Kids all the same ages. Oh, yeah, great family. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Great so family. It, it makes me feel right at home. <laughs> Everybody knows my daughter, yeah. you know, and their kids. Yeah. You know. It's true. Good to meet you. Oh, no. Nice job. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Good to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Yes, you've already set the rates back in November. So we're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Good 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 Heading to our next agenda item, we're going to um, enter licensing. So I will take a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the, uh, we move to the meeting of the licensing commissioners. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Over to you, Rosemary. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so first item on the agenda for the licensing is the application for the annual mobile food permit from the Nadine Levin of Pipe Dream Cupcakes. Oh, Should I miss something? Where it's the um, Bricks Grill. Oh, I'm sorry. My, I was just saying to Melissa, my papers are all mixed up somehow. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me a minute. I have a sale on my desk. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Application from Abbott Salem Inc. DBA Brick Grill, 701 Salem Street, for common victuals license and entertainment license. Tim, and you are here. So hold on one moment. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so Jim Zanakis for the applicant and uh, we had meant to apply for this at the same time as the liquor license so it was just an oversight we didn't make the deadline for the public um, notification and so this is just a follow-up from what we did a couple weeks ago okay Madam Chair, the application is in order, but there is um, one outstanding item, which is a certificate of occupancy. So we would ask if this was passed to be contingent on that. Um, the police department are requiring that all noise produced be contained in the interior of the building after 9 p.m. We got the certificate of occupancy pretty recently. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that should be good. Has it been has it been turned in yet? Yeah. No. The it's it's, it's issued. All set. Okay. Yeah. That all might have right. just crossed with whatever communications you have internally. Okay. Do you so already have the certificate? When are you opening? When, uh, so we have the certificate of occupancy for the whole building um, from the construction. So the CFO was issued for the whole building. Oh, I see. So that's that's good. 
When do you plan on opening? So that's a great question, but uh, <laughs> I've already missed a few deadlines with that. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, we're excited. That's all. <laughs> yeah. the, that's why I was surprised you had the certificate of occupancy because I saw you said last whole, time. It's for the whole. It's for the building. Right? Yeah. It's for the whole building, from what I understand. But I could be wrong on that. But uh, as far as the schedule, um, we've done demolition and a good amount of HVAC work, and then. Uh, after the approval a couple weeks ago, we started uh, ordering equipment and uh, furniture, and uh, today we ordered the, the bar tops, and you know. So depending on who's okay. delayed and for how long, but if all goes as planned, then spring, sometime. Okay. I'll make a motion that the select board acting as licensing commissioners approve the application from Abbott Salem Inc. DBA Bricks Grill, 701 Salem Street, for a common victual license and entertainment license. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's a unanimous vote. All set. We're the next item as well. Okay. okay. Application from Virginia Inc. for a change of DBA from J&M to Midtown Market for all... Did I, am I on the one? Yep, you're right. No, I was just seeing Oh, that's kind of like, okay. Um, has to stay. <laughs> yes, he, yeah, he does, he does, but he's all set with that one. Um, so, again, so it is DBA from J&M to Midtown Market for all alcohol package store license, 701 Salem Street. All right. So this is basically when we opened the new building, we changed from j &M convenience store to Midtown Market to better reflect the, the full scope of it being a market, not a convenience store. And uh, after all that time as j &M, we're Midtown Market now. So the ABCC caught that when we made the application for Bricks Grill. And um, it's just a change of name. Nothing, nothing else changes. Madam Chair, I will move that the um Select board acting as licensing commissioners approve the application from Virginia Inc. for change of DBA from J&M to Midtown Market for all alcohol package store license at 701 Salem Street. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's another unanimous vote. We're all set. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Application from Merrimack College for Higher Education Special Annual Liquor License at the Collegiate Church of Christ, the Teacher and Student Union. And you're speaking this evening. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jeff Doggett, uh, 84 Johnson Street, and Executive Vice President at the college. The last time I was here was for a single uh, use uh, license at the same facility. Uh, and I said at that meeting we were working with the town on getting us to this point. Uh, and this is, as I had mentioned at the previous meeting, the church is primarily now used for event space, whether that be religious or uh, other uses that we've been using tents and other facilities on the campus, we're now consolidating into that area. And so instead of coming in uh, and using the valuable time of the, the licensing committee on one day licenses, we've worked with the town to, to do this uh, license as we have in other locations on the campus. Okay, do we have any questions or concerns from the board? No, the only thing I saw was the police department wants you to continue with your police details. Yes, correct. Yep. Right. And you've agreed to that? Yep. Okay. yep. How have your events been going? We did that one uh, that we got the, the lace for and it's been great. I mean, it's a great facility. Yeah. I hope we'll all get a chance to come over and, and see it yeah. at some Good. point. I think the kids are excited about the student union. Uh, yeah, yes, they are. I think they're very excited about the hockey team as well. Uh, we're all excited about the hockey team right now. I'll move that the select board, acting as licensing commissioners, approve the application for Merrimack College for a higher education special annual liquor license at the Collegiate Church of Christ, the teacher and student union, pending the conditions by the police department. Well, second. 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 Selectman Davenport. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? None. That's another unanimous vote. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. I'll stay for any other questions. <laughs> The next, I, the next item on the agenda is the annual license renewals. And the renewals with uh, complete applications. And if you refer to your packet, um, we do have um, some following businesses are not renewing for 2023. And the following businesses are looking to expand their entertainment license, Stevens Coolidge House and Gardens and add car shows and family movie nights so forth and so on. So. Madam Chair, we just have um, four licenses that would be needed to be awarded contingently. If you remember correctly, we, we did do this um, last year as well. We do not have another meeting before um, the end of the year. Oh, we split them, okay. So. I'm sorry, say that. These are complete. These are these complete. are the complete. The first motion is the first motion is just complete. Sorry, it's my fault. Okay. I got I the between the two of us. Yeah. You're between the two of us. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about um, Stevens Coolidge wanting to expand their entertainment license to car shows. Although fun, they will bring loud muscle cars. And do we have any concerns about the neighbors? Is nobody here? No. no. So if you remember correctly, last year we they also had an expansion, and what we did was we awarded it, um, and I don't think anyone's here from Stevens Coolidge, correct? We awarded it um, the same as the year before, and then we invited them to come to our next meeting to discuss it. I can't imagine they're gonna have a car show in January, so that might be a good solution. Yeah. At least then um, it would be on the agenda again, and would give we could have it as its own agenda item mm -hmm. so that residents would realize it was on. Right, yeah, I think that, I mean, Movies, I don't think, would be louder than the music that they have, but, um, yeah, the car, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea to have them come in. Because, uh, yeah, and and movie nights, too. If it's in the summertime, you know, when, when are they going to start them? Around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. So, you know, we need to know what the plans are there. Where, where are they going to be projecting them? Where, you know, are they near the right. neighbors? The same with the cars. Where are they planning on having them? I'm assuming it's in their new parking lot, but, you know, let's, let's not assume. Let's figure it out. That's a good point about the movies because the movie has to be it has to be dark and mm -hmm. it's summertime and, and it Sunday yeah. until mm -hmm. eight thirty and that's what we run into with the schools is it has to be late. Okay. So, will we just skip that? So what I what I would do um, is I would approve the license um, with the same of uh, the same allowances as last year, yep. and then um, invite the attendee. Invite them. I think that makes sense as well. It just seems like we just need a little more clarification yeah. mm -hmm. and also let the um, in and weigh in. I think that would be in everybody's best interest. And it's not like we're desperate for time on it either. So. Right. So then, so I'll make the motion to move. I move that the select board acting as licensing commissioner approve. approve all the license renewal applications on the list provided by the town clerk's office, except for Stevens Coolidge House and Gardens and the Trinitarian Congressional Church. Well, they're looking for a fee waiver. What was the? What? There's three motions. There's three motions. Yeah. So, right. But you're going to do them separately. I'm confused. What do you mean? There's three motions. Yes. Yeah. So well, there's three motions. One for Stevens Coolidge, and, and then there's right. one for Trinitarian. Gotcha. So. so I'll second your motion. Okay. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Yeah. Any further discussion or questions? So this motion is to it's approve all of the existing. Except, except for Stevens Oh, except for. Trinitarian. Gotcha, Correct. gotcha. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So a motion and a second, except for the Stevens Coolidge. And yep. further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, unanimous vote. And okay. I will move that the select board acting as licensing commissioners approve the license renewal for Stevens Coolidge House and Gardens um, and deny the request to expand their entertainment license. So approve based on prior conditions. Okay, I think that sounds like a good motion. Um, clearly laid out. Uh, do we have a second? Second. 
Okay. So just a question: If we deny it, we're not we're not subjecting them to not being able to re-request that for a period of time, right? If they come in in January, they just they tell us and it's satisfactory, then we can approve it at that point. So it's not going to be denied for like you yeah, can't come back for a year. Yeah. Yeah. No, you absolutely can act yeah, on it when they come in. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm good with that. Then. Okay. So motion second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. It is a unanimous vote. And, and then I will move that the select board acting as licensing commissioners waive the annual entertainment license, license fee for the Trinitarian Congressional Church. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. And that is another unanimous vote. Can I ask a point of clarification? Does Main Street Liquors have a complete application, even though they're not open as a business? Yes. Um, so you've done it for other businesses. You approve their alcohol license. It, they can't open until they have a certificate of occupancy, but they did submit their entire renewal packet with everything included. But we are requesting um, to bring them forward at either the next meeting or the meeting after that to discuss how you want to move forward with it not being open for almost two years now yeah. or a year and a half. Okay. Sounds like a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll make a motion that the select board acting as licensing commissioners schedule a public hearing for Main Street Liquors regarding the possible revocation of their license. I'll, I'll second. second. Oh, Motion and a, and a second. I'm here for that. If there are any questions, I can be more than happy to address it. Uh, do we need to schedule a public hearing? We, I mean, we don't have I, mean, I would hearing. recommend that you at least put it as a item on the agenda so that the public would know it's being discussed. Yeah. As a result yeah, of we'll that, you should discuss it until then. I, I mean, that's what I would do because there's, there's no notice right now that this could be a discussion based on what we're doing today. Um, I think in fairness to all parties that, that you're correct in that. Um, so we will, we will give you notice when you will be on for a public hearing and be able to speak to it at that time. Can you go to the mic? Sorry. <laughs> well, first, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Second, if you have any question, you can shoot right now. I mean, I would be more than happy to address it. And yeah. I apologize, I've dropped the ball on this, but you know, just life has been a little bit challenging, you know? Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I mean, is to, to discuss it now when we're going to have a public hearing, just it almost just doesn't seem appropriate because it's other people yes. who might have interest should be I fair, fair warning. Um, um, to give you an update is that um, I've spent uh, up close to $150,000 in the space and um, actually I, I intend on transferring the license to uh, individuals that um, are um, going to operate uh, very soon, extremely soon, um, and I don't want to uh, give a, a specific date or timeline based on the transfer of the license, um, because as a, I don't want to make any promises, um, but uh, I do want to apologize uh, that I dropped the ball in here. Uh, town has been nice to me, and um, there's no reason, but life brought some obstacles, and um, you know, and just, just, I don't like to make excuses, but it, it is a fact, you know? So with that in mind is that I have invested the places, you know, the um, equipment are in place, the, uh, the 15 door cooler is in, in, is in place, which cost about some seventy thousand dollars. The flooring. Excuse me, the, sir, but I think mm, we're going to okay, have I'm a sorry. public hearing. I apologize. Yeah. To discuss but, all of that. Um, yeah. January 9th. Maybe. We invite him back on January 9th. Mm -hmm. So January 9th at 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for Thank coming you. in, though. No problem. So I made the motion. You made the motion. 
And then I don't know if anybody seconded it. Well, I'll second it just in okay. case. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second for a public hearing at January 9th. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. So now we're on to the renewals of the incomplete applications. Um, so as your packet is outlined. Sure, so we have, um, we have several licenses um, that are currently either missing documents or um, still need their certificate of inspection. So missing certificate of inspection is Bollywood um, and Merrimack College has two licenses that they're currently working on um, that did not pass and they're working actively with the fire department. I know because I'm on all the emails, <laughs> um, but that's the Rogers Center for Performing Arts and also their wow. campus center at 315 Turnpike Street um, and the key of the issue appears to be a fire alarm um, that needs to be handled that needs to be replaced. And then we have two that are missing certificate of good standing, which is Bertucci's and Jet Nutrition. And so we are recommending that like last year, you make your motion contingent on um, these items coming in. What happens if they fail to comply? Then they do not get their license. And so we did have that last year. We had one license that was voted contingent. That person did not get their um, documentation in, and we did, in fact, um, not wouldn't renew their license. And what's the deadline for the documentation? Is it December 31st? Bertucci's uh, is requested till January 6th for the uh, certificate. So it's up to you if you want to give them to that till that date. The 31st is the um, ones for the inspections because obviously that could be a bigger issue if you're in a, a property that doesn't pass inspections. What's with Bertucci's? Why, why can't they get it by the 31st? Of so day? both Jet Nutrition and Bertucci's was having a problem filing their annual reports because of their accountants from being told. But um, you have to file your taxes in order to get a certificate of good standing. Right. And both of them have... have um, I was curious. I think Jet Nutrition. Yeah. Yes. Regional trouble? Yeah. Yes. This past week. So, like what happened last year, if they don't meet the deadline, they don't get their common VIC license, so they could only serve takeout. They can only serve I mean, takeout. Takeout. Take 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 can they reapply? Like, is this is they could, right? Like, like yes. it's not. Yeah. They're not out for a year. Well, Bertucci's is a little different because they it's do a have a liquor, liquor license. license. So we can. So then our purview to extend to give Bertucci's until January 6th. That's what they have asked for, yes. And Laurie, correct me if I'm wrong, but the certificate of good standing is a local regulation. Yes. So they do have the ability to waive that till January 6th if they so chose. Yes, they do. It's not a requirement from the ABCC for their liquor license. It's our it requirement. It seems like good practice for us to require that. It is good practice. Um, yes. So I think we should stick with it, but I think it makes sense that we can be a little flexible on when. Yeah, let's not add to their trouble. Yeah, <laughs> stress, right? Uh, yeah. So right. with that, January 6th. Do we extend the same courtesy to Jet Nutrition or? That's what, yes. That's yeah. what we recommended. Yeah. Just get the, them both the same date. Okay. So out of all, of, compared to our last meeting, this is all that was left from the Nice work. Thank you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Impressive. Yes. Suzanne Pallich did an incredible job of um, working to get these things ready for tonight. It's not easy, and we're, mm -hmm. we try every year to start a little earlier nudging people. Um, the goal for next year is to get it all online, um, which hopefully will make it a little easier, but um, yes. she, she did a great job, uh, her and Dawn. Mm -hmm getting these things pulled together. So appreciate the work that they did. So do we need a motion that we will extend yep. that? So I'll move that the select board acting as licensing commissioners approve and renew the licenses for Jet Nutrition and Bertucci's subject to the receipt of the certificates of good standing by January 6, 2023 and approve and renew the licenses for Bollywood, Merrimack College Athletic Center, and Sakowich Center, subject to fire and building inspection 
certi certificates issued no later than December 31st, 2022. Just to correct, wasn't that the Rogers Center? Not the Athletic Center? Mm -hmm. Is it? It's well, I see in the, an existing. Well, I see in the, in the deficiency, it's the Rogers Center for Performing Arts, and in the motion, it was the Athletic Center. Is that the same building? I don't think so. Which, which one do we need? So I, I apologize. I think some of this actually literally was happening today. Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Nussbaum, who's done an amazing job of, of trying to help us make sure we meet all, all the deadlines. My understanding is, is that both Dwayne and Rogers uh, now has all their certificates and nothing else is needed, and that it was the Sackowich and the Merrimack Athletic Complex okay. that actually need the, uh, the, the, the vote, as you were just describing. Gotcha. Okay, so then the, uh, then the motion the was accurate. Is correct, and this yeah. is old. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll second your motion. Thank you. Motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? And that is a unanimous vote. Okay, so. We'll move to close the meeting of the North Andover Licensing Commission. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great, thank you. Moving on to new business, item A, the application for the annual mobile food permit from the Bean Levin of Pipe Cream Cupcakes. I don't think she's here. It's already been taken care of. Right, you did say that. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'll move no action. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Item B, to approve ARPA funding in the amount of $7,500 for an emergency response time study. I will ask for an explanation. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. So in over the past um, year or so since Chief Ware has taken on um, as chief, we've had a lot of discussions about our response, response times, particularly to um, 114 and some of the more difficult um, in, in further away areas. Um, so one of the things that we would like to look at is that emergency response time study and perhaps if there is a town owned parcel or other parcel in an area where we don't have the best response times where we could perhaps house um, a, fire, a fire truck or an ambulance. And so what this um, funding would do is just basically study the response time. I love this. I think this mm -hmm. is great. Sure. I've heard a lot from okay. uh, various people, residents and firefighters and police officers that, um, that, you know, we've got a lot of square mileage in town. Mm. And it, I think it's yeah. surprising when you look at the maps. Um, yeah. And our fire stations are this way and not that and the way. police station is very, yeah. really, very much really. <laughs> toward payroll. Yeah. So, so um, I, it's, it's a good thing to do, and it's good to know where your deficiencies are. Yep. Um, so we're, we're excited to get this work started. We have a consultant who's ready to go. Um, so, yeah. then we can plan. Yep, we like to plan. Mm -hmm. We love planning. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's a great project. So, if there's no further discussion, I'll take a motion. I'll move that the select board approve the use of ARPA funding in the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars for the emergency response time study. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item D is a discussion regarding the vacancy on the Greater no, Lawrence. No, no, no. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Item C. I need it's the glasses confusing. back on. <laughs> I need the glasses back on. It's a different environment. <laughs> it is. We're out of our element. Item C <laughs> approved ARPA funding in the amount of $450,000 for an electric bill assistance program and approved the revised guidelines. So if you could update us, that would be great. So we um, met with National Grid, Laurie and I, and um, they had a couple of comments on our original plan, ways to make it a little bit more streamlined. Um, one of those ways was that they would really prefer to have um, th this just three $100 credits for the 650 low income customers rather than us try to figure out what their bill would be. So at the end of the day, if your bill is $85, you'll have a $15 credit moving forward. Uh, but administrative wise, it's much easier. Um, Laura, that was really the, the main difference, right? That Oh, there's more. So we don't know if more people have maybe because we've been talking about it, which yeah, is great, great, right? Yes. More people have signed up. Um, so there is more 
low income customers now who qualify, which means that we'll have less funding available um, through our portion of the project. But honestly, I think that's great because at least we know where it's, it's going to people who really, really need it. And there's a great newspaper article on it too. That there was. Yeah. So as soon as we get this done, then we can get the application completed and we can get the people starting to apply and the postcard can go out. Um, there's a lot of things riding on, there's a lot of things riding on this boat. Um, so uh, we're really excited to get this project started and thank you to Laurie who's done a lot of work on it. Yes, thank you. The way the last few days have been, everybody's thinking I'm about really it. excited about this program. Yeah, it's yeah. really yeah. a it's great a use program. of our, our funding, yeah. so. It's really well timed too. I think people are, this last bill, people really yes. saw, saw a lot saw of commentary it, yeah, about that. And felt <laughs> the um, impact of the increased rates. Um, and that people can still opt in, right, to the yes. program for, um, or for aggregate the, the aggregate program. yeah to people are still calling rate. every day yeah. um, um, asking okay. if they're on the if they're yeah. on the program and we're actually finding a lot of people who either who actually just aren't on our program at all who maybe have a different supplier that you know they, they answered a phone call or a postcard yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, it's really very favorable to be on our program right now so if you need help call the office and any of us will be happy to help you sign up and it may take a couple cycles when mine is yes depends when you're me to read it when you did it yeah did. I don't know. I should really follow up on that. <laughs> okay. I'll take a motion. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll move that the select board approve the use of opera funding in the amount of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for electrical bill assistance program and approve the revised guidelines. I have a motion. I'll second. And a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, item D. <laughs> A discussion regarding the vacancy on the Greater Lawrence Technical School School Committee. I'm going to ask, of course, the manager to give us a little update. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, in November, we did receive notification in the town clerk office that Mr. Frank Rossi, Rossi is that who he says it? Anyone know? Okay, has resigned um, as a member of the Greater Lawrence Technical School. Um, after receiving that resignation, we did receive a correspondence from um, their chair which is um, Mr. Leo Lamontine, asking that the board um, fill that position for them. And so the way that that actually happens is a joint meeting between the school committee and the select board uh, where we you would vote um, to appoint someone new. I, I, was, I did have a conversation with the superintendent. I did let him know that I um, would be surprised <laughs> if you did decide to make the appointment. Um, just due to the fact that the election's in March and you already had made a decision not to fill your own vacancy. Um, but obviously we wanted to have this conversation with you. Um, I think one of the issues that they're having is that um, they are seeing um, a lot of tied votes because like you, they now have an even number. Um, we're, not see we're not impacted by that, but they are seeing that as an impact and wanted to explain that to you. Um, so if you did decide that you wanted to fill the position, I'd recommend that we follow a similar process to what we had laid out for the filling of our own vacancy, which would be, you know, posting, um, collecting um, resumes and then doing interviews. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of where we are right now with that. Oh, what's this? So they have a, a term coming, well, they are actually on the election. What's the term for these? Um, they're on the ballot in March, and I believe it's a three-year term. I don't remember the last time I've seen one of them on the ballot, though, but that's yeah. interesting. Laurie's looking right now, but I, be, I want to say I it's three it's years. Three -year yeah. Well, even if we posted right by our next meeting, and then that brings us to maybe the end of January, we're not going to appoint somebody until February in the elections. In a month? Yeah, that seems like a way. Yeah. Just to give people enough time to think about it. No, and you need to, we need to do a good job of, you know, making it an open process. process. And all that. It doesn't seem like there's enough time to do that. And so. so am I hearing that the select board does not want to take action on this item? It seems like a lot of resource time for a couple, for a month. And you know what, I think it would be confusing to the public too. They'll be yes. like, oh, okay, so we don't have, so that's all set, so we don't, I don't need to bother to run for office or have someone. Right. It's too confusing. Kind of like my papers were tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so are we agreeing to take no action on this? 
Do we have to vote on it? Okay. I don't know. That's a new one. Great. Moving on to item E, which is the, is the application of Rabbi Asher Bronstein for the use of the town common from 1215-22 to 1227-22 for the menorah lighting. Madam Chair, I would move approval. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excited about that. It seems like they're going to have a nice little event, too, mm -hmm. so if you can, yeah. can make it. <laughs> I think it's night two from what I understand. I think the fire truck's gonna be there, so. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Okay, item F, an application from of Amanda Alperin for use of the town common on April 22nd, 2023 with the rain date of April 23rd, 23, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for a small business slash artist event. Any questions? No, so the application is in order. Um, she, the maximum number of people that they're expecting is 100 with 50 at a time. The plan is to use electricity for music. They will be having some vendors. There will be a um, porter potty, but it will be picked up immediately after the event. Okay. And they will pick up the trash. And they, they're responsible for all of that. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'll move that the select board approve of the application of Amanda Alperin for the use of the town common on April 22nd, 2023, with a rain date of April 23rd, 2023, uh, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for a small business artist event. I have a motion. I'll a second. second that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, moving on to item G, which is a vote to reduce the membership of the Commission on Ability Assistance from seven members to five members. From what I understand, the commission has had a mm -hmm. difficult time getting a quorum for meetings, and um, this will help them out immensely to be able to continue the good work that they are doing. So, yeah, I would certainly support that. I think you can do as well with five members as you can do with seven. It's hard it, to get everybody it is able hard. to and attend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's. I think it was a smart move. Is that going to involve something more than us just deciding? No, based on the state law, you are able to reduce the number of members. Okay. Great. With that, I, I would move approval of reducing from seven to five. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're moving on to the approval of minutes. We need to approve the open session minutes of November 29th, 2022. Um, has everybody had a chance to review them? Any questions, changes, comments? Okay. So, hearing nothing, I will take a motion. I'll move that the select board approve the open session minutes of November 28th, 2022, as presented. I have a motion. I'll, I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Handing it over to Town Manager Rodriguez. Do you have a comment? Oh, just two very quick things. Um, on December 20th, from 12 to 1, we will be closing um, Town Hall for one hour for an employee appreciation. And our wreath contest is currently open, and mine's the best. So if you haven't voted yet, <laughs> um, the deadline is December 15th, 2022. We're all trying to unseat the water department, which has won for the last two years. So, and there's actually pours water. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. But um, you can vote online right now, and that's open until December 15th. Mm -hmm. To that extent, yeah. I, really have, I had no idea. It's a lot of fun. Um, That's great. Idea. Okay, it select board fun. updates. I think the wreath competition is fierce, and I can't wait to <laughs> learn the outcome. <laughs> so the 400 Great Pond Road Steering Committee had its first meeting last week. Um, very well attended. Um, I think it's going to be a good group, um, a mix of, <coughs> excuse me, town people and um, town staff so we're looking forward to that our next meeting is actually going to be uh, Friday morning at 8 30 in the morning we're going to be visiting the location and taking a tour of the location and then the following Monday the 19th we'll have our second uh, meeting in the select board room so we're trying to um, you know move forward fast we've got meeting schedule we're going to be doing uh, twice monthly meetings uh, so we can get prepared for town meeting and have a recommendation that's, that's it. great 
one last thanks to our festival committee because they had a wonderful event uh, pancake breakfast here last weekend so as always um, hard work of a few really benefit the entire community and we're very appreciative was the tree lighting it was two is that we haven't had a meeting right I don't know. Lighting? I feel like we I have, but I but yeah. Yeah. The tree lighting was lovely too. Yes. And, and the lights look fantastic. They really Every time they I drive by, yeah, I talk, so nice. Kathy and I yes. comment on it. Every time we drive by, I gotta send yeah. a note to the to the committee. It's really well done. It looks so nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, we have. Oh, I, really I was just gonna say, and I think um, partly due you to are. just some of the the weather events that it made for, a, actually kind of a more fun because it was spread out holiday. Mm -hmm season for the town i mean starting with a great turnout with the parade and then the following week um we did the tree lighting and then the following week pretty much we did yep. the breakfast yep. and i did speak to the chair i said you know i think this could be a really good plan going forward because to try to squish all that in right. to a one lot. weekend is a lot yep. And this will be my plug to encourage people at home to apply to be part of the festival committee because they can definitely use help putting on all of these events. It's um, it's, it is a, it it's is a lot a, of work. It's a tremendous amount of work and it's a, it is a, a great group of people that participate. And I'll make the plug again, they're always looking for donations. These, these different events probably add up. Um, we certainly got help with the, the lighting this year, which is a, a big boost. But it probably can run close to $40,000 they have to fundraise every year. We did get a break in moving forward. Um, we hope to continue with that on the, the, the lighting. Um, but it's a lot of money for the same group of people to be asking the same group of people to help with money. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're so inclined, any, any little bit helps that um, organization. They, they put it to good use. And how would people tell people how they might be able to make that donation? Like, how do they donate to the festival um, committee? They would most likely make the check out to the holiday festival committee okay. Um, okay. and send town it to town of town Handover, um, town of or North send Handover. it to Jeff Coco, the chair, and he will make sure that it gets deposited. Um, I think sometimes that's an obstacle, right? If people can go online and click and donate, they will do that. But <laughs> yeah, and again, it's, any amount is greatly appreciated by that group. I, I know, and it's also not only that. I forgot my my own project um, with with the wreaths too. That too, all of that is coming in all at the same time, and it's it's a lot. So I think if they separate it out, I think people will just have more fun um, through the season, having oh this weekend we have this and this weekend we have that. So, but they've done a great job. They've done a really good job. Yeah, there's yeah. one one more weekend of Crama Cruiser, right? Oh yes, um, on Saturday, that's right. mm -hmm. and the fire department still taking toy donations toy. until Unwrapped. the 18th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It Unwrapped. has been the Crama Cruiser has been very successful. Very successful. So, yeah. and the Y is very appreciative. And, and the mitten tree. Yep. Yeah. The town hall. <laughs> Actually, town hall is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's very festive mm -hmm. yeah. and fun mm -hmm. things like the mitten tree. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Okay. If there are no other updates. I will actually take a motion to adjourn into executive session where we will meet to dis consider the value of real property and also approve executive session minutes from prior meetings. And you will not return to open session. And we will not return to open session. <laughs> I will move that the select board enter into executive session warmer. pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A6 to consider purchase of real estate and to review and approve executive session minutes and not return to open session. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. We'll take a roll call vote. Richard Valancourt, yes. Laura Bates, yes. Ms. Bates, Medeley, aye. Janice Phillips, yes. Are we staying here or are we going upstairs? Is it easier to be if we just stay here? Yeah. Dee would very much appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we just need to um, ask the... Uh, <laughs> we just need to pick the cam people up. <laughs> adjourned. 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 Adjourned.